So if you're planning a trip to Toronto, as much fun as watching loads of videos, you may still want some little books to read. I always like to pick up some books of where I'm going just to give me a bit more information. So I went through the books available on Toronto and picked some that I thought I would share with you. So this first one is by Lonely Planet and it's the Pocket Toronto Top Sites and Local Experiences. And this is a great book if it's your first time visiting Toronto. When you first open it up, you'll see it gives you a bit of the areas of the city. In the table of contents, we can see there's information on planning your trip, um, exploring Toronto. They divide it by some of our different areas and neighborhoods. They talk a little bit about Niagara Falls, uh, survival guide before you go arrive and getting around. And then they highlight some of the attractions. So there's some photos and I found a lot of their recommendations to be fairly good, like restaurant recommendations in the different areas. Here we have the entertainment district. There's also little maps that you can have. This book is nice and small. You can keep in your bag and they have little maps of the different areas. So if you're in this area, you can, uh, it will help you get along. You can see there's the CN Tower, the aquarium, um, some food recommendations nearby and stuff so as i said if it's your first time to toronto um, then this is a great book to get i agree with a lot of the recommendations in that and it, they guide you well so another series of books is the 500 hidden secrets of of course this is toronto and i've gotten these books for different places i visited and i always think they're fun but in this one i find that a lot of their suggestion, suggestions aren't actually in Toronto. They're in surrounding areas, Oakville, Etobicoke, North York, which is fine and all, but if you're visiting Toronto, you'd like some things downtown. So I think it starts off fairly well, like five best places to get poutine, Leslieville pumps. Oh, and a side note is some of these places have now closed. So like poutinis, as great as it was, no longer exists. So, so a lot of these books came out before COVID and the pandemic. And since then, some places have closed. And then Nom Nom is good. Um, and I haven't tried it from a couple of these places here. But for example, they had some craft breweries. And it was five craft breweries. Two were in the city. Three were in the city and two were far away. And Toronto has about over 30 craft breweries in the city. And so I just found it odd that why are we talking about ones that are in Oakville and other places and Barrie, Barrie's like an hour and a half away when we have like 30 right here in the city. So like here, it's like this place is in Richmond Hill, Mississauga. As a tourist, you're not gonna go to these places, Richmond Hill, Mississauga, and one is downtown. Like I've lived here for 30 years and I haven't been to some of these places, nor would I go all the way to Mississauga to go to a restaurant. There's so many here in this city. So that's my only problem with this book. And a lot of these places, as I said too, have closed when I was reading through it. So that's just something to keep in mind. So, I mean, these books are always fun to look at, but I just found I didn't agree with some of the areas some of the ideas of places to go. I do agree though, go to Toronto Music Garden um, is one of my favorite places. So it has some good things and some things I'm like, it. it's too far out of the city. They're not in Toronto. My thing, I've lived downtown for so many years is if the address doesn't say Toronto, it's not in Toronto. Mississauga is not Toronto. And as a tourist, you probably won't want to go to Mississauga. The next one is the Monocle Travel Guide to Toronto. They do these for multiple cities, so you may have had it. This is great. I mean, if it's your first time, you can pick it up, but it's also great if you've been here multiple times, they may give you suggestions that um, you didn't visit because Toronto is huge. You can spend days visiting the city. So when you only have a short time, you may not see everything. And then at, the more you visit, the more you want to see you know, get away from the tourist areas. So this gives you sort of like a map of um, basically sort of the downtown area, the different parts of the city. And then they have like hotels they would recommend, restaurants, 
shopping, all that stuff. They have some uh, divided by types of shopping, homeware, record shops, um, and then areas of shopping as well. So again, though, um, like for example, for example, Ben McNally Books has now closed. It was a great little bookshop. So I would look, um, if you see a place that you're interested in, oh, and then have little essays. If you see a place you're interested in, I would look online and see if it still is open. A lot has stayed open, but a lot has closed. And then there's new stores too. So this is a cute little book. Um, a lot of their suggestions in the general area is more West End. So, but um, if you've been here before, you may want to pick this one up. Next, we have 11 places in Toronto that you must not miss. And so you think, oh, I've got to get that. But um, uh, I've lived here, as I said, for 30 years and I turned to number one and I didn't even know this place existed. It's in Scarborough. So um, this is really nice, but as a visitor, it's harder to get to. I personally haven't been there. I've driven past it on the highway, but I haven't been there yet. It's supposed to be a nice museum, but it may not be where you're going to go on your first time. There's statues in here to see um, the dog park fountain. You would probably come across that in your visit. The Batashu Museum. Yeah, I'd go there. Where's this place? I'm like, again, I didn't even know it existed because it's in Etobicoke. Sinister, you'll probably see that in your visit anyway. So, um, again, oh, this is, we've gone here, the Henderson Brewing Company, and we would recommend you go there. It's a really great little brewery. So, again, it's places, if you've been here before, or even if you just want to get another book to look at before visiting, and you can decide, okay, out of these places, what do you really want to see? And when you read about it, you can be like, I don't need to see that. Like the Queen Streetcar. First of all, our streetcars don't look like this anymore. And second of all, at the time of filming this, the Queen Streetcar um, is a bus because Queen Street is all torn up for construction. So that's the other thing you may. But the King Streetcar is just as good. 504. So anyway, gives you some ideas. And again, the Toronto Music Garden, that's two books I've turned to that page. So it's on the waterfront and it's really nice. So my next book is the Toronto Architecture City Guide. And this is if you are obviously interested in architecture, it comes with some walking tours, but it's just great because there's so many buildings in here. There's, I wish the pictures were better, but if you're walking around, you're seeing it in real life. So you can be like, there's the building. But they have so many addresses. So if you are interested, you can stop and be like, what was the big thing about that building? You know, why was it designed that way? And they'll tell you the significance and the importance. They, so here's a walk on Young Street and they give you um, the numbers to correspond with your walk. If you did want to do it as a walk or just as you're um, exploring on your own, you can find the area and read about all the different buildings. So I find that interesting. And then the last two books I'm going to share are the Toronto Street Art Strolls and Best Urban Strolls. And they're obviously by the same person. Um, I This was the first book they did, but a lot of this information is now in this book to my, like when I was looking at it. So if you're going to get one, just get the Toronto Best Urban Strolls. And I enjoyed this book and I'm hoping to actually do some of the strolls. They have some nice colorful pictures. They talk about, you know, how, you know, give you directions on your walk. They give you a map here that shows you where you're going to walk. And again, this is, I think, more if you've been here before, because if it's your first time, you want to do all the big attractions. Whereas if you've come multiple times, maybe you want to explore like a different area of Toronto that you haven't explored yet. So you can see it's nice and colorful and they give you a variety of things to see. Again, there's the dog fountain. That's downtown, so it's easy to uh, get to. Some ideas for rainy days. 
harbor front. So as I said, it's sort of fun. I'm going to um, do some of these walks because there are still areas that I don't go to often that I'm going to go and check out as well. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on some books you can get if you're planning your trip to Toronto and otherwise just keep watching my videos because I'll be giving you loads and loads of information about the city as well.